Welcome to a new episode of Books Review by Dreamers Jotter. Today, I review the book Poor Economics, written by Abhijit V. Banerjee and Esther Duflo. When I was a kid, I used to hear newsreaders on the TV repeating the term microfinance over and over, and how it is going to reduce poverty. Mr. Muhammad Yunus was awarded Nobel Peace Prize in 2006. Note that the prize was not in the economics category, but in the peace category. That's because, he brought a lot of people out of poverty and everyone believed his idea would change the world for good. No more poverty. 16 years later, I still see kids working on the farms, and in bike repair shops, instead of going to schools. Lots of migrant laborers walk thousands of kilometers during a pandemic, and some of them run over by a train as they sleep on railway tracks, because they have nowhere else to go. So even with rapid improvement in technology, awareness, and globalization, why are there so many poor people? The authors of the book, 2019 Nobel laureate couple Abhijit V. Banerjee and Esther Duflo try to give some answers for that. They did groundbreaking researches by performing RCT experiments over several years in many countries, including India. They do not provide any pinpointed solution so that a bureaucrat or a minister can implement it, and thereby, all the poor can get out of their misery. It is not that simple. The authors try to explain what, and how poor people think, and how some certain well-intended measures could not offer much for the eradication of poverty. Have you noticed that a lot of poor Indians drink tea multiple times a day and they put sugar more than middle-class people generally do? The authors mention a family who owns a TV, but they cannot afford to eat three meals a day. Is TV really necessary for that family? Did you notice that a lot of daily laborers drink alcohol almost every day, although they could have saved that money and send their kids to a private school instead of a public one? Ever observed when you visit a market in the evening, and you see some man, a moneylender, arrives at the shop, and the shopkeeper dutifully pays the interest even though there are so many banks in your vicinity? Why do businesses started by poor people although seem successful at first do not almost ever reach the level of Infosys, Reliance, or Facebook? Ever noticed when you pass by a government hospital there are a huge number of patients waiting for their turns? I have observed that government doctors spend not more than two minutes with a single patient. They will ask you what your problem is and prescribe medicines in less than two minutes. You might find answers to all these questions in the book. They also try to argue some theories by other economists, such as supply versus demand in education. To explain, some economists argue that there is no need to open a very large number of new schools in rural areas and supply free education. These economists believe that poor do not see it as an investment which gives profitable returns in the future. But, most other decision-making bodies see school education as a necessity for everyone, and the poor remain poor as they don't have access to a school in their neighborhood. Authors visited several schools in several parts of rural India, worked with NGOs, and tried to establish and improve what is going wrong with several schools, and the education system itself. The answer to the question of why microfinance did not change the complete state of poverty altogether, as many of us have expected, is discussed by the authors and is quite interesting. Banerjee and his team traveled with Ms. Padmajar Reddy, founder of Spandana, probably the first microfinance company in India, whose native town is the place where I grew up in Andhra Pradesh. Banerjee also criticizes some theories put forth by authors like James O. Robinson and Darren Asamoglu in their book, Why Nations Fail, where they argue that countries are destined to be poor because of their political and economic history. This history sometimes spans hundreds of years into the past. The authors argue that this is not always the case, and provide an optimistic view that even small changes in how we implement programs can also radically change the outcome. The book offers very informative and fascinating lessons, whether you are an economics major holder or a casual reader. I recommend this book for every urban dweller who may not have an idea of how poor people make decisions and the ground realities in rural areas. For more reviews, log on to www.dreamerschotter.com. Thank you for listening. Please like and share this video and subscribe to the channel.